how do you value this right here? Your automatic thought is probably, well, $100 because that's what it's worth. But I'd argue that you probably don't value it in the way that you think you do. What is it about a $100 bill that gets most people all hot and bothered? If you saw one of these lying on the ground, then I'd guess that 100% of you would reach down to pick it up. But if we traded this out for a penny, then I bet that you'd think twice before going through the whole hassle of bending over to pick it up and place it in your pocket. Even if you did, you'd probably forget about that penny until it turned into a nuisance as it went through the dryer. At that point, you'd probably throw it in the garbage. But why is that? Is a penny not good enough for you like a $100 bill is? It's because you value a penny differently than you value $100 even though they're both money. I don't blame you though because a penny is so useless nowadays that there's been an ongoing great penny debate in the United States to remove the coin from circulation altogether. I vote to just get rid of it because they cost more to produce than they're even worth. So it sounds to me like it's a big old waste. But we're not here to talk about pennies. We're here to talk about $100 and how the value of that amount has become extremely skewed over the years. Hey, I'm Jared and on this channel, we talk about all things personal finance, investing and financial independence. Just because something is easier to do doesn't always mean that it has a positive outcome. Take for instance, the money that we spend through the internet. Amazon is the easiest example. They have mastered the art of disconnecting us from how much money that we're spending. They use the benefit of convenience, speed and free shipping to make us purchase more often and very rarely think twice about how much we're actually spending. It started with click, 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 buy. Then Amazon realized that if they can speed up the process by removing more of those clicks, then we can become extremely impulsive. Now we have credit card information saved to our account, one click buy, and the Amazon delivery truck showing up every day like it's our personal dealer. I still get excited when Amazon trucks show up to deliver me a package, which shows that they're doing something right. That's why they are the masters of human psychology, which is why their stock has grown over 500% in the past five years. We've gotten to the point where $100 on a screen feels differently than physically spending $100. Even though the value of that $100 is exactly the same, we don't treat them like they are. Numbers on a screen are always easier to spend than physical dollars are. If you're someone like me who uses credit cards for anything and everything, then a good workaround that I've found is to intentionally look at the amount that you're spending. It's so easy to gloss over how much you're spending and just click buy but that's the worst thing that we can do. I'm one of those budgeting nerds, so I manually track all of my spending. Now, sometimes I'll save up all of my receipts, then track it all at once, once per week, like on a Sunday evening or something like that. But I've actually found that that's almost too long to wait because I start to lose touch with the money that I have going out. The most optimal way that I've found to handle all of this is to track my spending as I go. After I leave a grocery store, for example, I'll sit in my car for a couple of minutes and enter every Thing into my budgeting app. Now, I've even done this on dates before. The women usually don't really care once I explain what I'm doing, and the few that did, I ended up finding out had pretty insane amounts of debt that weren't concerned with it, so it really wouldn't have worked out in the end anyway, so luckily, they kind of if you haven't done it yet, then please do me a huge favor and Hulk smash that thumbs up button. If it makes you feel better, you can kind of consider me a charity case, so at least you're doing it for charity. When I look at this $100 bill, I see that it's worth $30,000. But when you look at it, you might see it for the $100 that it's worth right now. No, we're not talking about compound interest either because this $100 would take forever to compound into $30,000. To understand why one person sees it as $30,000, and another might see it as $100, you have to first understand something called the 4% rule. I'm gonna alter that 4% a little bit in a minute, but hang on because I'll explain why. All the 4% rule tells us is that you can safely withdraw 4% adjusted for inflation from your investments every year and not run out of money for at least 30 years. So for example, if you have a $1 million investment portfolio, then you'll be able to safely withdraw $40,000 per year and there is a high likelihood that that initial $1 million amount will not decrease. You're essentially living off the gains from your investments, AKA the $40,000 and nothing more than that. Another way to look at it is to take the amount that 
you'd want to live on each year, multiply it by 25, and that is the lump sum that you'd need invested to be able to achieve a 4% withdrawal rate. In our example a second, a second ago, we take $40,000 times 25, which would give us that $1 million. So what does this have to do with $100 being worth $30,000? Using the 4% withdrawal rate as our base assumption, every $100 per month saved equates to $30,000 less that you'd need invested. Instead of having $1 million invested, you'd only need $970,000 invested by just cutting your expenses by $100 per month. Now, if we bump that up to $200 per month, then you'd only need $940,000. Bump it up to $300 per month saved, and you'd essentially save yourself from having to set, set aside almost $100,000 in investments. So you need to ask yourself, is it easier to save up $100,000 or find three $300 worth of expenses that you can cut from your monthly spending. That's not for me to decide, that's for you to. But I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would be willing to give up $300 a month so that they can retire one or two years sooner. Now, if you wanna supercharge this whole process, then increase your income and decrease your expenses. Boom, done. Quick disclaimer, to get super technical so I don't get roasted in the comments, after the first year of withdrawing 4%, you might have to adjust that amount just a little bit to make your money last longer based on certain market conditions and your asset allocation. So 4% is just a starting point. So if we wanna be extremely safe, then about a 3.5% withdrawal rate is better to go with. In the grand scheme of things, $100 doesn't seem like a lot. If your goal is to build up a $1 million investment portfolio and your current net worth is a fraction of that, then one. $100 isn't gonna make or break you getting to that amount, or is it? You see, it's easy to think that unless we receive some sort of windfall of money, there is no way that we're ever gonna be able to have enough money to be able to afford to leave work early or even on time. Who cares about that $100 when you need $1 million plus dollars just to feel comfortable? But the truth is that it's very rare for anyone to accumulate the majority of their wealth in one year or one big lump sum. That's because wealth stacks up one chip at a time, not all at once. The $100 that people take for granted accounts for one of those chips. You'd need to set aside $100 10,000 times to reach $1 million. The compounding, the compounding effect of consistently setting aside $100 here, $100 there, $100 over there, is how true wealth is created. It reminds me of a story about someone chopping down a tree. The tree chopper will swing the ax many, many times at a tree before it actually falls. Now they might take 150 swings before it even moves an inch, but on that 151st swing, the tree will start to fall over. But it didn't fall because of that 151st swing. It fell because of the 150 that came before it. You will not and cannot reach that $1 million or whatever amount it is for you without first focusing on how you're going to set aside the next $100. Everyone feels like they didn't start early enough Poor money decisions have put us all behind the eight ball at some point, and unforeseen circumstances have plagued each and every one of us. But the difference between the person who has $1 million and the person who doesn't is their ability to look at things with a long-term perspective. Wealth stacks up one chip at a time. Never forget that and make that your personal finance philosophy. How much is your time worth? If you had to put a number on it, then what's the dollar amount that you'd place on an hour of your time? While you're working for someone else, it's easy to figure out. If you work 40 hours per week and you make up $1,500 per week, then your time while you're at work is $37.50 an hour. But what about when you're not at that J-O-B? Depending on what you have going on outside of work, it might be worth it to pay a middle school kid down the road $100 to come over and cut your grass for a couple of months so you can save yourself self a couple of hours a month. The younger you are, the less your time is probably worth because there's a lot less responsibilities, you have more time left in life, and the, your value to the world is very minimal. That sounded a little strange coming out of my mouth. I I'm not saying that young people have no value at all in life, but 
you know what I mean. The older you are, the more responsibilities that you most likely have and the less time that there is. I was talking to a friend the other day and we got on the topic of spending money to save time. Now he was telling me how he has come to the conclusion that nowadays he's more than happy to spend a few bucks just to get his time back. I completely agree. Although I try to cut corners and game the system with spending money wherever I can, sometimes it makes sense to spend money to gain time, to gain more time I should say. The payoff is usually higher the less time that you have and the more things that you have going on with things like friends and family. I'm a single guy with no family, so an hour of my time is naturally less valuable from, a, from an emotional standpoint than a guy with a wife and a couple of kids. But my time outside of my nine to five is still pretty darn valuable because I've built side businesses where I earn additional income. Now I'll have to admit that I'm still not the best at always spending money to save time. I do it in some areas, but could definitely improve in other areas as well. While my time is valuable, it's still not valuable enough to hire someone like a full blown personal assistant to run a bunch of random errands for me. But that's what a significant other is for, isn't it? So maybe I just need a wife or a girlfriend, I guess. I'm just kidding, settle down. We've been talking about the upside of $100, but there's also a downside to be aware of as well. Every year you hold on to that $100, it loses a little bit of its value due to inflation. How much it loses from year to year all depends on a ton of different factors. We've seen the government essentially flooding the market with a lot of money in 2020, which would tell you that inflation is going to be out of control at some point, but who the heck knows? I know how inflation is supposed to work, but I see articles going through why it doesn't play out the way that it should. So I start to question the average 2% inflation rate target that the, that, the federal, that the Federal Reserve is always aiming for. All I know is that our money is for sure going to be worth less in the future. The best thing to do with it because of that is to have it out there working for you through investments and not sitting in some bank or safe. To be honest, the best solution to hedge for inflation that I've found better than any other or any future economic financial uncertainty is to become as wealthy as possible. That's 100% guaranteed to cover your own butt from most things that happen in the future when it comes to your finances. <laughs> yes, just be rich. And nowadays, it's not that difficult to do if you think about it. All you have to do is get a few things right and everybody can technically be rich. Make sure to Hulk smash that thumbs up button. Check out these videos to your left next, as well as the description for more resources and playlists to help out with all of your personal finance and investing needs, as well as get to get one free stock from Weeble worth up to $1,600. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Done.